two, well, you actually have a ton of different mock toe boots, but there's two that are very similar. The classic 875 and the kind of classic 1907. And we always get lots of questions like, what are the difference? Are they the same boot? You know, what's real, what's not? What's Which one should I consider? Why, is, why do they have two variations of the basically the exact same boot? Well, we're gonna cut them in half, run them through a bunch of tests, and show you there's really three big differences between these shoes or boots, and they it might sway you one way or the other. And also, like, I don't know if you've noticed, but these videos get longer and longer as the channel gets older. So I'm going to attempt to make this a fairly concise video uh, because we've kind of saved some of the long rambly bits for the Rose Anvil 2 channel where we go through like the Alden Indies, initial impressions, unboxing some really cool, unique boots. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. This video is sponsored by Shopify. Shopify is an all-in-one commerce platform and store builder. It's a super easy way to make your own store and they have tons of tools that you need. And even with no experience or design capabilities, it has tons of drag and drop features, making it super easy to create your own website. Whether you're starting your own business, you have an existing business, or you just have a fun project going on, including making wands like I made in like 2015. We did a Shopify ad like a few months ago and I was like, yeah, sometimes I, I just build sites for, for, for fun and just cause I like branding and stuff. I built a website for the wands and here's evidence of some of the uh, origins of pre Rose Anvil making some wands for some friends with lumoswands.com. So Shopify is great for fun little college projects like Lumos Wands up to a small business like we have at Rose Anvil because our, our site's built on Shopify and I love the analytics behind it because we try to be as close to a data-driven website and, and brand as we can and so having Shopify's easy to understand and easy to use analytics and information that gives you insight into who's buying your product, when they're buying it and where they're at, it's really it's a really handy thing for a small business like mine. So if you're looking to build a website, you want a fun project to start working on, or you just have these dreams of making a small, a small business, Shopify is a great place to start because you're allowed to build a website for free to check it out, to kind of get your feet wet. So check them out, the link in my description, and thanks again to Shopify for sponsoring this video. So now let's go over the quick history of Red Wing and their mock toes. So it all started in 1952 when Red Wing debuted their 877 model, and it was their original mock toe boot and it was originally developed for hunters and sportsmen and it had a new style of outsole with the wedge that they called the traction tread outsole and it was originally called the Irish setter and then in the 1960s they were quickly adopted into the American workforce beyond just sportsmen and hunters and they developed their own brand like little sub brand underneath Red Wing called the Irish setters based off the name of the, of the original boot and in the 1970s Japanese and Europeans began to wear these Red Wing work boots as this kind of Americana fashion and that's what really pushed this mock toe boot into the superstar and kind of the zeitgeist of the Americana workforce workwear uh, style that still is around today and their mock toe boots were kind of up and down in popularity and the 1907 model was released on a new last that was developed in 2005 they called the 45 last and then in 2007 J Crew and Red Wing partnered up on a successful lifestyle collection that culminated in the 2007 launch of Red Wing Heritage that we that you're probably buying most of your Red Wing boots from today. And fast forward to today, we still have the two models that are very similar with very slight differences. So now let's go through some of the details and start figuring out what the real differences are between these two boots. So let's start with the leather first. So both of these leathers are tanned by SB Foot. They're both a chrome tan leather. They both are lightly sanded on top and have a heavy layer of wax to lay that nap down flat to give it a nice, clean, even finish. And they're both about 2.2 millimeters thick and they're about the same quality. They're both like around an A to A minus grade leather, you know, because some people would consider it a little bit inferior because they had to sand them to give it a little, little bit more even finish to remove some of those imperfections. And so we did a cross section test, put the macroscopic lens on it, and you can see both of them still have plenty of grain left in them. We burned both of them. They both reacted about the same, like a leather that has tons of oils infused into it. Takes a while for them to burn. And the macroscopic lens on the top to just show you what I meant by the little bit of fibers that are that can be brought up if you give it a little bit of a scratch. So, and we did a little snake bite test and the 875s took 74 pounds, the 1907s took 64 pounds. So really, the leather, there's no, there's no difference. You know, they're both SB foot, they're both the same thickness, and they're just different leathers, different colors of leather, but they're essentially the same. But there is a difference in how these shoes look and the last that they're built on. So the 875s are notorious for being really narrow. And I think that's probably where they, they came up with this idea for a different last on the 1907s. Because if you look at these two boots, you can see there's a pretty big difference on how wide the 1907s are. They definitely give you a little bit more width around the ball of your foot and a little bit 
more height. And a part of the reason they added that height in there is because these boots come stock with a little insole that has leather on top with foam underneath. So they created just a little bit more room, which can be really good for people that aren't used to the heritage boot style where it is, it is kind of a pain to break these in. It takes quite a while for the insole to shape to the shape of your foot. And it's still at the end of the day, isn't gonna have nearly as much squish as a more modern boot that has tons of foam throughout the construction. So the 1907s being able to have that removable insole, swapping orthotics, do whatever you need to do to give you a little bit more um, squish underfoot and having a little extra toe room is a huge benefit that people really like in the 1907s. And then if we move to the inside of the boot, both of these boots shafts are unlined, but they are lined at the vamp. And they have the same lining material, so no difference there. And if you look at the insoles, once we have the removable insole out of the 1907s, they're both huge slabs of veg tan underneath, the, underneath your feet for the lasting board or the insole. And then if we look at the outsoles, exact same outsoles, it's that traction tread, blown rubber, almost like the, it's, it's Red Wings version of the, the Vibram Christie outsole. People like these because they are fairly soft and the one problem is they wear out fairly quick, but the way that they build these, they make them really easy to resole. So all you gotta do is take it to any local cobbler that is decent and they'll be able to just pull this old outsole off, glue a new one on, and it's a pretty quick fix, but no difference there, it's the exact same. Then if you look at the midsole, that layer right above the outsole, on the 875s you got a little rubber white midsole, on the 1907s you have a black rubber midsole. So a slight difference, but it's just a difference in color. Really more than anything, there's, there's no difference in thickness and quality materials. And we also ran a puncture test on the outsoles of these and both of them were basically identical. The 875s were 209.5 pounds, the 1907s were 208 pounds. So nearly identical there too. But one huge difference that people always notice is the difference in the welts. But it's a lot less different than it might look because they're both 360 degree Goodyear welts, but the actual welt itself is different. On the classic 875s, you just have a regular flat welt, but on the 1907s, you have what looks like a Norwegian welt, but here's the kicker, it's not even a, it's not a real, Norwegian welt that's a fake stitch that wraps all the way around there so it's essentially just a flat welt but with a little bit of a raised edge that kind of creeps up the side of the boot that doesn't actually do a single thing it's just for looks um, they, they kind of claim that it's for more water protection and more dirt protection but there's no way that's true because you can see it just kind of pulls away from the sidewall of the boot because it's not actually sewn into the boot it's not glued into the boot and so it's it's just for looks. So any claims that people are making for waterproofness or more durability, it's just not true when it comes to this welt. And it and it still could matter when you're deciding between the two boots because it has a different look. To me, that Norwe that fake Norwegian welt looks a lot more rugged, kind of has that outdoorsy look versus the flat welt has that more classic heritage look. So that's the majority of the differences from the outside. You know, there are a few little differences here and there, like the differences between the eyelets, the different laces it comes with the different tags and stuff, but for the most part, that's the, the differences from the outside. So let's cut them in half and see if there's any real differences on the inside. All right, we got them cut in half, so let's see what's inside. So they both have that really thick five millimeter thick slab of veg tan for the insole. They both have the cork filling. They both don't have a shank. They both have the leather board counter. They both have the reversed counter cover. Same lining on the inside, inside same Puritan stitch. Uh, they're basically identical. There's really no differences on the inside at all. So I don't really know why they separated these into a separate model or why they didn't just change the last over or make more differences on the inside of the boots because, I don't know, you, you'd think for developing a new product you would try to make it different enough that it wouldn't confuse the consumer as to what the differences are or lack thereof. 
So really there's three big differences between these boots and, and big is maybe a, an exagger exaggeration because they're not that big of a difference. But number one, probably the biggest thing is the last. The 1907 has that really generous, well, fairly generous last. It gives you a little more wiggle room, makes them a little bit more comfortable, has the room to put the insole in. So they're just a more comfortable version of the classic 875s. And then the other two differences aren't really that different. You know, you, the 1907s come with that insole and the other difference is that they have a fake Norwegian welt that doesn't actually do anything. Which one should you buy? If you want more wiggle room, you want more comfort, go with the 1907s. If you like the classic heritage look with the narrower last, just go with the 875s with the Oro Legacy leather. So then to the big questions of this video, are they worth the money? You know, this is kind of a general question for both the Red Wing boots, but to me, as time goes on with this channel, Red Wing seems to shine more and more because we have plenty of other boots to compare it to now and for around 300 to 310 dollars these seem like they're a pretty good deal especially being made in the united states with all the high quality materials i think they're worth the money personally you know they're, they're, with red wings have done a few weird things here and there with fiberboard but for the most part red wing continues to impress me year after year especially as we cut more boots in half so what about how they rank rank on our matusa board and the mocktober board well, let's start with Matusa first. So Matusa right now, we've got JK at the top, then followed by Thursday and then the rest of them. So for me, I would say the 1907s are pretty, they sit pretty clearly between JK and Thursday right at that second place spot. And then as for the Mocktober board, I would say these are better than Alden's. You know, Alden's at the top of the board and this has a full grain leather insole. It has all this uh, sim similar components, but just a little bit better. And for that reason, I would put the 1907 at the top of the Mocktober board. Mocktober slash Mockvember because it's, all of Mocktober just got completely blown apart. And we're still, we got more Mocktober videos coming out. So Mocktober and Matusa is probably going to be rolling for the next month and a half. So um, let me know what you guys think and what your experience has been in the 1907s versus the 875s. And what, no, what differences you've noticed underfoot. Um, put it in the comment section because people really like to go down there and get some of that... Uh, user information on people who've actually worn them for an extended period of time and thank you guys so much for everything you do i don't know how long we ended up making this video the goal was to make it under 10 minutes so if we did it great if not you got another long rambly video so thank you guys see ya